Well, welcome to your first lab of Physics 185. Um, today's lab is going to be primarily mathematics, and what it will do is it will set down a foundation that will be helpful to you as we look at many of the, the quantities that we're going to measure in an astronomy class. One of the things you may have recognized is that astronomy deals with the universe, and the universe is quite large, and so we need to measure those very large numbers. For example, the distance from the Earth to the Sun is 150 million kilometers. And if we were to write that out, we would write out 150 million kilometers. Units are always important. Um, but that will get tedious after a while, especially if we think of the fact that um, the distance to our closest star is many millions of times greater than the distance from the Earth to the Sun. And so we need to come up with a way of writing big numbers in a compact form. And that um, mechanism is called scientific notation. Many of you have used scientific notation before. Um, you've all had a high school math class, and in that high school math class you should have used scientific notation. This is just simply a little refresher to get you back in the swing of things and get you familiar with using numbers. And a couple of the units will give you a little bit of a sense of the scale of the units. The first thing is to remember the formation for scientific notation is based on powers of 10. And so typically this will be written by some number multiplied by 10 raised to some exponent. The M represents what we call the mantissa, the E represents the exponent, and so this particular number, 150 million kilometers, would be written as 1.5 times 10 to the 8th kilometers. The mantissa is based on the numbers that you have here. The powers of 10 just counts the number of spaces it takes you to get from where the decimal point would be to the first number. So if I count, I would have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 steps to get to this first number that determines the exponent. Scientific notation can also be very useful if you're taking two very large numbers and multiplying them together. So for example, if I had 150 million kilometers and I wanted to multiply that by a very large number, you can imagine what it was like in elementary school where you're taking two long numbers, multiplying them out, and you'd have about 30 rows of, of numbers that you'd have to keep track of. Scientific notation makes things much easier. If you have to multiply two numbers together using scientific notation, let's say I have 2 times 10 to the 8th, and I'm using um, simple numbers so that we can do the multiplication as I'm standing up here, and 3 times 10 to the 9th, and I wanted to multiply those two numbers together, all I would do is I would multiply the mantises, 2 times 3 to get 6 times 10, and then to get the power of the exponent, I would just simply add the exponents together here, so I would have 8 plus 9, and so my result would be 6 times 10 to the 17th much easier than writing out all those zeros and then multiplying the two numbers together. If I had slightly bigger numbers, let's say the numbers I was multiplying together were 5 times 10 to the 6th and 4 times 10 to the 7th. Now you may say those aren't necessarily bigger numbers, but they will make a point. I multiply the two mantises together, 5 times 4 gives me 20. And I add together the exponents, 6 plus 7 gives me 10 to the 13. Now the one thing that would be wrong with this, and why virtual astronomy would not tell you this is correct, is the mantis is specifically expected to be a number between 0 and 10, between 1 and 10. And so this number, 20, is not between 1 and 10. What I need to do is divide this by 10, right, so this would be 2, and then I need to show that extra 10 somewhere, so if I take a 10 away from here, I would add a 10 to the exponent, and this would be 2 times 10 to the 14th. So those are the, the techniques. It will just be a simple review of scientific notation. The first two exercises on this screen are just converting numbers from decimal notation to scientific notation and back again. The second one will be the arithmetic that we just talked about. And then the last two are a little bit of an exercise for you to practice using the skills you've developed for scientific notation to get a sense of the scale of the universe, primarily converting between the units like astronomical units, light years,
kilometers that we would be using to measure astronomical distances. And then finally, this will give you a little bit of a sense of how long it takes to actually go anywhere in the universe, time for a journey, we'll look at how much time it might take you to make a trip. Um, one of the things you'll need to know for that is the relationship between distance, speed, and time. And that relationship is very simple. The speed, which physicists want to represent by a V, is just equal to the distance divided by the time. One thing I would tell you to be very careful of, units are important. If you have a salary of 20000 a year, that may sound good in dollars, but not so good if it's 20,000 pennies. The same thing is important here. So be very careful when they ask you to find the speed. If they give you a distance in astronomical units and a time in hours, and they want you to find the speed in meters per second, remember you need to convert your distance to meters and your time to seconds before you divide those two numbers. Your lab report has a number of conversions that you will need for this. And as always, the internet can be a very useful tool to help you find conversions between different types of units. If you have any questions, please email me. Good luck with the lab.